A few weeks ago, I talked about how this car had an MOT the next day and the lights were playing up and then proceeded to spend about 20 minutes changing a bulb. A bulb which was an LED bulb when really it should have just been putting a normal bulb in it to avoid all the LED bulb problems. And then people told me my reverse light wasn't working. It, it wasn't. I've watched the video back. But it is now. Anyway, I've got the results here. Ready? It is. It's a pass because, well, you probably knew that because if you're that invested, you will have Googled the reg already or searched it up on one of those checkers. And uh, I've built the tension dramatically by leaving this for two weeks. That's my scrap box. That's nothing to do with it. I just park next to that. You'll have to excuse my coming into this dark, dank workshop. Um, it is lovely and light outside, but my microphone does not have a muff. And it'll get annoying. I don't even know if that first bit I've done is any good. Never mind. Um, yeah, so C6, you can just about see it. Brilliant. So done pretty well. Um, there's the MOT. It passed first time. Uh, one advisory. No, two advisories, I'll tell you that. Two advisories. Well, one's a minor defect. Um, I've got a bug on me, look at that. Can you see the bug? He's sweet. <laughs> um, he's in the dyno now. So the anti-roll bar link, uh, drop link on the front, one of the covers is severely deteriorated, but not quite a failure. So it's gonna be a failure next year, plainly. So that needs doing. And it got an advisory on the fact it's got an oil leak, but not an excessive one. Uh, I think that's fairly standard for these engines because there are many places oil can leak out of. Other than that, tickety-boo. I bought a wheel bearing for the rear last year. Oh, that rhymes too much. Uh, and I did this because it got an advisory on the last MOT for a wheel bearing, which it now hasn't. So uh, yeah, yeah. There you go, straight through, no problem. I've actually been using it. So MOT aside, watch the state of play with my big Citroen. Um, well, I keep going on about this and doing nothing uh, because that's kind of, that's what I do. It's a tricky one, it's a tricky one to call. Basically, I'm, st I'm a bit stuck. I am a little bit stuck. This car, and I've checked this this morning, this car, as it sits, owes me £2,990. Am I in silhouette? So I'm in a bit of a quandary on what to do. Um, I've done the maths this morning. This car owes me £2,990. That's for everything. So that's including buying the car, that's including buying uh, a good second-hand gearbox, which I haven't actually fitted, um, which came with a good second-hand torque converter, which I haven't fitted. Um, all I've done is rob the valve block out of it. It basically covers everything I've done. The purple bushes, uh, I can't remember the things I've done. The height, everything. Tires, wheels, different wheels on it, and I've still got the original wheels, although they are beat to death, but I have got them. So it owes me £2,990, um, and that's including MOTs. The only thing it's not including is tax and fuel. If it included tax, it would be £20,000, but uh, no, it just includes the sort of purchase costs, none of the running costs other than perhaps the MOT. I don't think it's bad value. £2,990 for a car that would have retailed at near 40000 which people run a mile from. And I've done, in the last year, you know, I don't know how many miles I've done. I'm gonna find out. Right, I'm gonna have a look on my little app thing. Uh, Oh, there we go, look, I'm gonna do this live, here we go. Um, I've had a YouTube comment come through. Stefan Cook 2574 hello. Didn't know you had an SM. Nobody ever says that. It's really, really good. Uh, it plays on a joke that I, no, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. 
it plays on the fact that I earn an SM. Um, right, let's have a look. This will be interesting, said nobody. This car has done 6,876 miles in the last year. It is fair to say that about 1,400 of those, was it a 1,400? Yeah, it probably is, um, were not me. They were Hubnut. And then another 1,400 of those are in France. But they're all still miles at the end of the day, which is much better than the year it had before. It only did 1,694. Um, up until 2019, it was averaging 15, 16,000 a year. One year, it did 22,500 one year. So um, it's been used, but it was high mileage, and now it's slowly regressing. Problem is, it doesn't really matter if it's high mileage or not, because in the real world, mileage only really plays an impact on the value of a car. Um, perhaps how worn the interior is, things like that, how stone chipped the front end might be. But in, you know, the, the, the main thing mileage plays an impact with is the resale value of a car. And the resale value of these at the moment is Nil poi. I mean, it's not quite, but it's it's not a lot. Um, I don't know if I'd even be able to sell it for the £2,990 I'd put into it. I don't think I would, if I'm honest. Um, there's me talking at the value of my car down on YouTube. I'm a great businessman, but genuinely, I don't think it would be. It's, it's still got a gearbox glitch. It's drivable now. Um, it's not right, but it's usable, um, whereas before it was not really usable. But it's not worth much, and I love it. And I keep saying that, and I keep saying I can't afford it, but I love it, and that hasn't, I mean, look, 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 pillarless door, and look, I love it, I really do, but it is pointless, really, well no, it's not pointless, it's not pointless because it brings me enjoyment, so it's not pointless, but it's very, very, very hard to justify. And all the people in the comments, and I read them, who say it doesn't make financial sense and things. I know we get, you know, you get comments on YouTube where people give you their opinion on your life, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm putting my car life online, so people are going to comment on it, and that's fair game. And they are right. A lot of the people who say it's not viable, you can't justify that. <sighs> I mean, it's not right because it's a subjective, you know, it's an opinion, but yeah, their opinion is they couldn't justify it. Could I justify it? Well, I have done up to now, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting that way myself. It's, it's just, it's just too much money, you know? The amount of money every month, if I, the difference in tax, road tax between this and something cheaper to run, um, if I save up three months worth, that's, I don't know, that's one inlet valve on the SM. It's just, it's just such a good looking car as well. It really is. But, yeah, it, it's a tough call. The problem I've got is that, hello Spidey. You alive? You are, ooh, aggressive little one. Um, yeah, the problem I've got with it is it's, I can't justify it. But I love it. It doesn't fit my needs, you know, because a car that fits my needs is a car that is practical, comfortable, soft, cheap to run, and easy to drive around town, and is happy pottering around town. This is not all that smooth around town, if I'm honest. The suspension is not primarily set up for, you know, bumpy roads in towns. Um, the fuel economy is abysmal around town. It's big, generally. But the problem is, I could, do you sell it? Who's going to buy it? If you want to buy a C6 at the moment, you can go and spend three thousand pounds, three and a half, four thousand pounds, and get a fully sorted one. Get one with lower mileage, less marks on it, an interior that isn't fifty shades of beige, and yeah, you you know you wouldn't have to have this. You wouldn't have to buy a project. And it's not like this is a special C6. This okay, yeah, it's a top of the range one, but a lot of them are. So what would I do with it? If I was to get another car, I'd want to sell this, use the money from the sale of this to buy myself another car. There's a couple of cars in mind actually, but <laughs> I just don't think it's, I don't think I'd be able to sell it for a decent amount. And if I was to sell it, I think it's condemning it. I think it's a death sentence. Even if it doesn't go to someone for the first year, 
after that, it, it's going to be in parts in no time at all. Because with cars like this, with any car, but with cars like this, it's survival of the fittest. And this is not one of the fittest. It's, it needs work. And it's higher mileage. Esther Ranson has travelled in the back of this car. I found that out. In the middle seat, in the jump seat. Esther Ranson. Dame Esther, Dame Esther Ranson? I think so. So yeah, it's had celebrities in it. And it's still not worth anything. So yeah, I don't know what to do. In a perfect world, I wouldn't rely on it. And I'd have somewhere nice to park it up. And you're all going to go, you've got a big unit. Just park it up. Each space in here costs money, right? And I've already got too many of them for my own stuff, really, although there is a limit on how much I can work on. So at the moment, I'm about, the balance is about right between my own cars and work cars. And if I was to put this in here, unless I go get rid of something else, just to put this in here and park it, I've taken up more space. And then what do you do with it? It just sits there degrading. Do you put it out with misery? Do you say, I'll sell it, and if it goes, it goes. You know, if someone has it for parts, they have it for parts. But I put a lot of work into it, and I love it. I absolutely love it. The problem is it's not a classic car. It's, it's a special car, but it's still an everyday, modern-ish car. So it's not a special car in the way that I would say a BX was a special car, or an Imp, or a Clement, or something low miles TVR, even Tomato, Professor Tomato. But, you know, that's a weekend car now. You wouldn't use that daily, but this, you would. It's not a weekend car. It's a diesel saloon from 2006, 2007. Hmm, what do you think? I don't know. I don't know. And it needs work. I haven't shown you that, have I? So, some of this is not a surprise, not unknown, but there is Le Beast now. There are a couple of issues. The aircon doesn't work, still. Uh, this was an issue last year when I went to France and it is going to be an issue again this summer because unless I have an untimely demise, I'm going to be hot again this year. Um, or unless something mad happens with the climate. And to be honest, although it will almost certainly mean the eradication of the human population on Earth, if it means it not being 35 degrees, mm, um, so the aircon doesn't work. I don't know why that is. That might just be that it needs gas, but of course it's not going to be that. Um, there are certain pipes in here that is an engine out job to change them, in which case I just wouldn't do it. It could be something like the condenser, and I can live with that, because that's changeable. And I have to go in there anyway, because there was a problem with this car when I went to France, and I forgot all about it. And then I pooed myself when I saw it the other day. If we had to look in here, we've got a pipe. I can just pull this out. And if I look down there, I can see something. Now, that down there, let me put some light on the situation, is a cable tie. And that is a bleed port for the radiator. And the bleed port for the radiator is broken. And then someone sent me one from the C6 owners, and then that one broke as well. And I think it's because, I'm saying broke on purpose, I can say broke. Um, I think it's because the threaded, gussety, ratchety, bayonet-y thing in the uh, radiator is broken, or something. Um, but if you look at the top of the radiator here, you will see that it's wet and has been weeping and leaking and all sorts. And that drain plug is being held in, or that bleed plug, sorry, is being held in by that cable tie. That's not ideal. You wouldn't want to go far like that, would you? You definitely wouldn't want to go, say, I don't know, all round France. But because it's quite nicely hidden by that, I completely forgot it was like that. I did that when I put that back in one night and realised, oh no, I haven't got time to sort that out, and put a cable tie around it to hold that plug in. If I take that cable tie off, it'll just come out. It'll just fall out. And that's with the, no pressure in the cooling system, of course. If you took the cable tie off and ran the engine and got it hot, it would just... And I've driven around France in 35 degree heat with that. You can see why I like this car. It's a good girl. It, it tries. Um, 
I have other problems. So in here, uh, on a video a little while ago, you might remember I changed this pipe here, but there is another one right next to it, I think. Which one is it? Yeah, that one there goes to the top of the radiator. This is almost certainly going to be in the same kind of condition, so that needs doing. But I have also got a coolant leak down here, and if I remove the vanity cover, that's the proper name for it, isn't it? Vanity cover. Now, you can't really see it, but down in there is a thermostat housing, and it had been changed fairly-ish recently, but I think it's leaking again. I actually had a visit the other day from a man called Steve, and uh, he kindly donated me some parts, some C6 parts. Um, this is one of them. This is a used thermostat housing, so you can see how they kind of work. There's the thermostat in there, and that goes, I don't know, there somewhere. And apparently this is where they leak, on this join. And the genuine ones leak worse than the aftermarket ones. So um, he's told me that when I change it, I'm going to break all the uh, diesel leak off pipes, which has filled me with joy. Um, I'm just trying to see, it's a right old state, honestly. It's a wonder anyone does anything on these cars. So that's the top hose. I have no idea how that goes in. But it looks like you've got to remove a lot of stuff to change it. Brilliant. So that's pretty much what the state of play is with the C6 at the moment. I know there are people who um, like this car, at risk of being like a certain hub nut where people have favorite cars on the fleet. <laughs> I hate saying that. Um, yeah, I know this is a popular car and people probably like me owning it because it means they don't have to. But more for them, for two reasons. Firstly, this has been really good. It's, it's been a decent car. You know, for the, for the miles I've done in it and for the... Oh God, it's lost a lot of coolant. It's been a decent car. Um, yeah, it's basically leaking coolant out the top of the radiator now. Um, but yeah, for the kind of the use I'm, I'm using it for, and what I'm doing in it, it's doing a brilliant job. It really is. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love it. I just, I have a sad feeling that it, it, eventually I'm gonna have no other option. I can't afford to run it, really. Um, you know, when it comes down to it, or certainly can't sensibly afford to run it. Um, and when you sell a car, you have to accept that things might happen to it that you don't want to happen to it. But what's the, what's the alternative? You keep it forever? You don't even live forever. How are you gonna do that? So yeah, that's pretty much where the C6 is at. Um, plodding on, plodding on, using it. Uh, probably using it not as much as I have been because that coolant leak is that coolant's dropped quite a bit. Um, it's not that pipe along the front there. A lot of people will be going, oh, check that pipe in the wheel. I've done all that. You've got to watch the old videos. I don't know if I covered it in a video, actually. Well, I mentioned it. I don't know if I showed it. But yeah, I've done that. It's got a silicon hose down there now, so. I, I don't want to face it. I don't want to face the, the potential possibility that I end up loving this car and spending money on it and time and effort and then just have to sell it and end up having to sell it for buttons and then it just goes off and gets broken up anyway. It is just a car, it is just an object and I have other objects that I have to prioritise ahead of this one. But it doesn't make it any easier. This is the problem, your daily car. You shouldn't love your daily car. On one hand you could say you should because you spend all your time in it. That's the one you spend the most time in, you should love it otherwise you're just wasting your time on the road. I'm not like that. A daily car for me has to be a car I respect, but don't necessarily care that much about. So, yeah, I'd be worried if I parked this somewhere. Well, actually, no, I don't know if I would, because no one looks at it, but yeah, I don't know. Right, I'm gonna go and have a think. I do love this, but I have a horrible feeling it's gonna end up in pieces by somebody. Not me, I'm not doing it, but yeah. Anyone want to massively overpay for a C6 and give it a good home?